Welcome to the Tech Team STEM Building Advanced Manufacturing Room. Today's video I'm going to show you how to turn on and home and use the little Roland MDX40. First thing we need to do is turn on the computer and wait for the computer to boot. Once the computer is booted we can get in and we click OK and we type in the username which is CNC Workshop and the password CNC Workshop. Click OK and the computer should now start to load. What we need to do now is to open the program called VCAF Pro. It lives down here. We can double click on it. And what we're going to do now is locate the file. So if we go to our file folder and go to desktop here, we can open up Tech 10. Double click on that folder. And we need to launch acrylic light display bottom. This will be the demonstration model that we're using today. To give you an idea, we're going to be CNC machining out this acrylic light display for one of our year 10 projects that we do here in plastics. So before we get started, we can just have a look at this, open up the toolpath and pin it. And if we show the toolpath here, if I actually click on here, and you can see that I'm using a six millimeter end mill which is designed for aluminium, but it cuts wood really well as, as well, okay? So there's actually two tool paths here. So I'll put you in a bit of an isometric view here. And if you notice here that I've clicked all tool paths, if I go preview all tool paths, you'll see it do the pocketing down to a 10 mil deep, and then it will do a contour clean up here. We can now turn on the machine. We do this by resetting the stop button first. And you'll notice the power comes on there's a blue led then we press the power on button here and we allow time for the machine to find home you can see now it's finding its x y and z home position notice that we lift it up on the z axis first and then when i cross in x and in y what we do now to load the job we're going to press view there's a little button here called view and that's going to bring the table to the front now we have to have the lid closed when we're doing this if we open the lid uh, the machine will stop because it won't do any automatic processes with the lid open. Let's prepare the job. Now, when preparing your model today, it's important to note which side to apply the double-sided tape. So let's take a look. We're going to be doing this pocket here first. This pocket lives on the saw line underneath. So when we have a look here, the saw line, and I flip it, the pocket's directly underneath it. So we need to place the double-sided tape across this surface here. Here's our double-sided tape. We can place it on here. We only need one full-length strip. Be very careful here and cut your double-sided tape off and then firmly apply it. Once you've applied your double-sided tape, you can gently get underneath it with your hobby knife or your modeling knife and peel that off. Don't touch it once it's peeled off because your oil in your hand will cause it not to adhere to the bed. Now, when we place our timber in the machine, it's, you've got to realise that the slot comes to the front, okay? So we need that our double-sided tape and our, our groove, if I show this other piece of timber here, you notice that the slot is facing the front, so both slots must face the front. So let's go in we go. You see my saw cut? I'm going to place it right on the edge of the table. So the corner of the timber goes to the corner of the table. It's very important you put it the right way around. Now, don't bang on it, just gently push down on it. So we don't want to hit it, we don't want to impact on the table, we just want to squeeze it down with our hand and we can hold under that bag to get it on. We can now launch the Roland controller software which lives down here in the taskbar. If we click on that there and launch it, You'll see here it's called Roland V Panel for the MDX40. We can now, using these keys here, we can jog the machine around to find our work coordinate system. Now, using the Roland control software, the V Panel, we're going to jog the machine to the centre of the cutting tool is on that corner of the timber there, and that's where our work coordinate system needs to be. I'm jogging in the Y axis, now I'm jogging in the X axis. 
And now I'm going to jog down in the Z axis. Be very careful not to crash the cutting tool into the timber or you'll break it. I now have my cutting tool in roughly the approximate location. You'll notice that the centre of the tool is on the centre of the Y axis, X axis. So now we need to set that into the controller. Okay, using the V panel, we can use the drop down where it says set, X, Y origin, apply. And you'll notice that the X and Y now are both zero, zero. Now we can do the same for the Z. The Z axis, I'm gonna use the touch probe in the center of the material. To do that, I need to jog the cutting tool to the center. So we go up, we go across, and roughly there. We place the sensor underneath here. And what we can do now, we need to close the lid and we can run an automatic Z sensor. I'll jog it down a little bit closer so it doesn't have so far to travel. Set Z origin using sensor, detect. I'm now going to relocate the machine to the X, Y origin, move. The machine has moved now where I set it up originally on the corner of the material. Now I'm gonna open up the program and we're gonna run it. I'm gonna check that box there so they're all selected and I'll click on the floppy disk icon, save toolpath, and I'm gonna click next, output toolpath. Click okay. Now it will take 15 passes to get down to the bottom. Each pass is roughly 1.3 millimetres, 1.4 millimetres deep. We don't have a lot of horsepower on this little spindle. We've only got 400 watts, and that's why I'm treading gently here. Not Now we're currently at the seven millimetre mark. Uh, this is called a pocketing tool path. And we're cutting at 3,000 millimetres per minute. That's our feed rate. Out. So this is our final depth of cut for the pocketing tool path. We're down at negative 10 millimetres in the Z. The cutting tool now do a contour tool path, full depth. Conventional milling, notice it's going the opposite way this time. And it will clean up that pocket to give us a nice finish on the wall. And we're done. Once the machine returns to home, it will return back to the XY position. Uh, what we can do now is press the view button on the machine, bring it back. Now before removing a job, we need to vacuum it. Before removing your job, uh, try not to jam anything under there to remove it or bang on the table. What you simply do is put both hands on either side of the timber and you're gonna twist it off like this. You're gonna lift it from the back and it will undo from the top. Now my arm might be in the road here. And We're now ready to do the second side or the second operation. This is the top operation. Remember the first one we did was here in that front corner. That was called the bottom operation. We're gonna flip it now and do the top operation. And this operation, the slot will be towards the back in the first operation, the slot was towards the front, all right? So we need to put our double-sided tape on that bottom side. Okay, I've taken off the, the white side, put the bottom side down now, and we wanna match that corner again. We wanna try and get level with the front and level with the side. Okay, once again, press down hard. Now later on we may change to a vice setup and that will be, uh, there'll be no need for double sided tape. Remember don't whack the bed, just push down gently to make sure that we've got good adhesion. What we can do now, we can actually, we don't have to do another setup, it's already set up to that back corner so we can leave it, we can just simply run the program. Close the safety cover and I'm going to move to the XY position. I'm 
I'm going to locate the second operation here. So open up our folder. And this time we want the top operation. And you can see it here. We can open the tool pass, pin the tool pass. And you can see here that there's four tool pass here. So the first one's gonna be a pocket for that top, a contour, then an oval pocket, and an oval pocket profile. Now, once again, to operate this or to run the program, we click on the Save Toolpath option and we need to click Output Toolpath. We're now in our full depth and we're actually cutting it 3.1 millimeters below the top height. So this is our final top pocketing tool part. We're going to do a contour now using a conventional cutting strategy, which is going the opposite way. Now we're going to do the oval pocket in the centre. Now we're currently at a quarter of the way deep. Uh, this pocket will be 20mm deep, plus the original 3mm. So the final depth of cut here will be 23.1. So we're at a quarter of the way now. We're about 55% of the way down now. Three quarters of the way there now. We're currently at 18.1 millimetres. So here's our final depth of cut for the pocket. Now you can see we've got a lot of uh, timber swarf wood chips stuck in there and that's some of the crunchy sounds you'll hear. Uh, it'd be good if we had extraction but we don't. So here's our profiling tool path cleaning up. This will be three passes to clean up that wall. Allow the machine to finish, wait for it to retract the Z height and return back to the XY position. Press the view button and don't forget to use the vacuum cleaner and give it a good clean. To remove your job from the table, to release that double sided tape, remember to grab a hold of it and twist it forward like so. comes off quite easily, grab your double sided tape and just peel it from the timber and throw it in the bin. Remember the bottom side pocket here lives above the saw blade sock. This top pocket here, okay, is in the front as well. So I'm quite happy with that. What you can do now is take this over to the laser, um, have it this way up and engrave your name on here. Remember, this is the bottom side, that's the top side. Thank you for watching.